before we get into this video, just a quick reminder to always stay safe and follow the health and safety precautions that your resin manufacturer provides. All right, so here's the sculpt we're working with. It's from one of my previous videos and I've already created a mold for it, but as you can see, I kind of broke the ear off during the demolding. All right, so here I'm making a resin copy of my master. That way all of my future molds can be made from this resin copy and I don't have to worry about it breaking when it demolds. Make sure to mix your pigment super thoroughly. I've sped it up a lot here, but to ensure consistent results, you really want to mix it really well. Air bubbles tend to get trapped in the nooks and crannies of my mold, so I'm putting a little resin in and then tilting it around to try to mitigate the air bubbles that might form. Then it goes into the pressure pot for five hours. So I'm pretty happy with how these came out, but I definitely want a smoother finish. So I'm going in with some micro mesh and sanding the surface to smooth it out as much as I can by hand. So with that sanded keycap, I'm creating a new silicone mold. That way I can try casting in this new mold and seeing what my results are like. I'm slowly pouring a little bit of silicone over the top of my keycap in the areas that might get air bubbles trapped in it. Then from there it's standard stuff as usual, pouring in a thin high stream in one corner of your mold. Then it's back into the pressure pot again and I'll generally repeat this process until I get a mold and a new master that I'm happy with. I'm mixing some resin here to fill in my maker's mark. If you turn your keycap over, the little logo inside of the keycap is what's referred to as a maker's mark. You just need a little bit of resin and then you take a popsicle stick and gently wipe across the top.
So here I'm starting on the first shot, which is the black nose. So I know a lot of makers use toothpicks to slowly drop in resin, but I find it a lot easier to do it with a really thin syringe. A lot of makers like using toothpicks to slowly drop in their resin, but I like using a really thin gauge syringe because it gives me a little more precision. It's so thin that the resin can't even flow through the syringe properly. I could make my life easier by just buying a bigger gauge for my syringes and injecting it, but admittedly I kind of just like dropping the resin in. So you might be wondering what my molds are sitting on top of. They're just little risers I made out of popsicle sticks that allows my molds to sit at different angles. This makes it a lot easier to do multi-shot casting where a lot of the parts of the molds might be sitting in different areas of the sculpt. So I'm going to be ending the video here because it's getting way too long. I'll definitely follow up with another video so you can see how the casting ends for the sculpt. Until then, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.